So the big one is this Sunday afternoon in Kilmallock, quarter to three, Newcastle West versus Adair. Um, I repeat last year's Limerick Senior Football Championship final. If you were to pick, you know, the finalists at the start of the year, you know, you probably would have said these teams, pretty much like the Pierce Kilmallock and the Hurland, they have been the two standout teams in recent years. Newcastle are the champions, um, you know, and they've been very good this year, I think it's fair to say. But Adair have kind of come in under the radar, and we'll start with them, Matt, because obviously we're lackluster in last year's final. There's no two ways about it. It was it was a poor game. Um, missing Hugh Burke for for the entire season in counter player, but also missing Owen Ryan, Owen Costello would have been there for all their success, and Garrett Sparling as well, a young lad coming through the system. But, you know, under the radar, they've gone about their business. They've won six out of six, you know, and, and they beat Casey's in the semi-final, which is no mean feat. You know, they'll definitely be happy where they are. Oh, God, they, 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 of course they will, Jack. You must have got a look, a look at my script before you came on there because, like, if you were told or whilst you would fancy Newcastle West and, and they are at the start of the season as possible finalists, as maybe, I suppose, in some cases, probable finalists, but if you were then told that you work, uh, the four that you mentioned would be out for the season, like, you would certainly revise your thoughts on it and you would revise your predictions, but you, you rightly said they've gone about their business quietly, quietly. And I suppose it, it, it is fair that the two teams that top their respective groups with unbeaten records, with 100% records, should contest the final. Now, they, they got to the right passage to the semifinals, um, which in some cases can be a bit of a poison chalice in that, um, uh, that their opponents invariably would have had played a quarter final. But um, there's a amount of that, and um, I saw I saw both semi-finals, and um, Newcastle West had, you know, they had the ideal semi-final, Jack. When you come out at the right side of it, it was a real tough searching test from one lane, and the, the outcome was on a knife edge, Jack. It, um, two minutes into injury time, Newcastle West were um, just winning by a point, and then they they they. They crafted up a wonderful goal, which was finished by Dermot Kelly. And it was only at that stage did they put the game to bed. So, like, they had a real, real test. Now, looking at the other semi-final, by contrast, it it, it, it was it was one-sided, Jack, to a point. Um, the scoreline um, would suggest so, but if if you if you dig behind them, if you dig behind the scoreline and and see that Father Casey's for some inexplicable reason, um, mounted up a tally of 16 wides on the day. Now, Father Casey's, they literally, Jack, flew out of the traps traps in Fina that day. Three points up, three points from play after five minutes, and it took to be all going so well, but slowly but surely and patiently, um, Adair ran in on him, and... Um, Eventually caught up with him and then went ahead. And you've got a sense in that particular game, Jack, that once a, a, a day have got their noses in, in, in front, they were not going to be overtaken. I thought it was a very uh, consummate, efficient uh, performance by a dare. And, um, like, you know, so many times in the past, um, in games like that, um, Hugh Burke has been the go-to man. Um, wasn't there on this occasion. Who'll forget the goal he got in the 2020 final in the early moments when Adair were facing a gale force wind? That was the type of um, uh, inspirational player that they were missing. But slowly but surely, um, they did it the Adair way. And um, they, they, they did it... Um, they, they did it through the experience they have garnered up through the years, um, up through the last five or six years. And particularly, Jack, um, you know, the, 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 the winning mentality that they have got. Like, you you must remember that they, they were relegated in um, 2015. 15, yeah. Won the intermediate in 2016. Won the senior in 2017, 2019, and 2020. You know, throwing to um to um premier under 21 uh, championships to go with it, 
And one one would be inclined to say it, it, this is a team that um, you, you, you've been trying to say that it is a team of all men and that they have been around forever. Not a bit of it, Jack. This no. is a, still a very, very young, a uh, very, very young and formidable at their side. Yeah, and I, it's 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 good you highlight that. I suppose we played them and it was a round three after the break and without Hugh and the two ones and them. Like for about a scene, you would you would have targeted that game and said this is the game where it can be the dare. And like Casey started well, got a goal, and we're ahead for probably forty minutes or so. And as you said, slowly but surely, they grind grind you down, and they just have this this know how how to win. And Hugh Burke talking to him before the final, he mentioned it so many times this this know how and this experience, and they're just so hard to beat. You know, even when they're not playing at their best, and I don't think they've played at their best. This year, which is fair because of the, all the injuries, but it's, it's so difficult to beat that even if they're not at their best, they won't allow you to get their best, and, and they'll beat you at sixty or seventy percent. And you know they'll have they'll have no fear of Newcastle because in seventeen they would have been rank outsiders, you know, coming up from intermediate ranks, and and they caused a shock. And, and since then they've them, themselves Newcastle have had this back and forth, back and forth, and. They'll carry that twenty twenty one final with them because they never got going last year. What they do to other teams, they kind of Newcastle did to them last year. But you know, on that know how, it's it's just so difficult to play against there. Yeah, very very difficult. I saw him a couple of times during the campaign, and I particularly saw him against Ballylanders, who were relegated, relegation threatened at the time, and and. Um, you know, they dug out a result that very few clubs they they beat Ballylanders by a point. Uh, on an evening when when Ballylanders um, demonstrably were were probably the better team and and but it it was this whole idea thing we'll hang in there we won't concede and and um, uh, they held on to win by a point which was you know crucial for both sides crucial from an Adair perspective in that it it showed them a semi final spot and from a Ballylanders perspective in that it sent them nose diving into the relegation playoff so um. Um, yeah, they 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 they've, they've they've got this winning mentality, but you know, it, 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 starting out it wasn't a, it it wasn't easy for the dare this year for the simple reason that yeah they were down the four players, and you had a new management team coming in after the long reign of Harry of Harry Gleason. and you know that 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 there was a bit of time for the players to get accustomed to the methods of of, of John Bruder. And and his management team, of uh, you know Pat Donnelly and Michael Burton, and um, it you know that that in itself took time, but it it, it bedded in very very quickly. Of course, John Bruder is a hugely a hugely experienced manager, and you know a, a peculiar type of manager, Jack, in that he has won counties and reached all all islands in hurling and football. Ah, uh, sorry, hurling and camogie. Won an All Ireland uh, Camogie with Milford and reached an All Ireland hurling final with Charleville as manager. You, you know, so um, they, 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 there was probably a bit of getting used to it, but um, you know, it they rose above it, Jack, and um, yeah. they're here and here on merit. You'd have to say they are, and, and I suppose we're ten minutes into talking about them, but they are facing, I suppose, the most formidable team in Limerick football and. I would say the best team in Limerick over the last seven or eight years, not in terms of actually winning championships, but if there's one team you don't want to play, it is Newcastle West. Um, the quality of players they have, even you mentioned Dermot Kelly coming on and scoring a goal, like he didn't start from, you know, he's played much championship this year that I don't think other teams can afford to do that, but Newcastle can. And they have been guilty of being complacent on a given day that has proved really costly over the last few years. Um, you know, like in 18, they would have been heavy favourites against Pell Landers. As I said the previous year before that, it was Adair in the final. Um, I know they lost Adair in 2020, which is which is fair enough when they play each other. But this year, they seem to have arrested all that complacency. They're, you know, grinding out a win with Nito and they're putting in putting up big scores with Nito as well. I'm thinking back to when they, they beat Calibly, I think, heavily with Mike Mack. Got a hat-trick. But in terms of squad depth, there is no team that could compete with Newcastle West. 
No, and that that, that would be the case. Um, I I would say for a, I I would go further than six or seven years. I'd go as far as a decade, actually, Jake. And um, but the the unfortunate thing from a from a Newcastle West perspective is that they haven't um, they haven't translated it into success. In like for instance, on 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 Sunday they will be seeking to put back to back titles for the first time. Yeah. A very, very interesting interesting statistic. They've played six games. They haven't conceded a goal yet, Jack, in the championship. Yeah. Which, I actually which don't is, have know, which, is a, which is a fair, you know, it's 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 it, it, it's a fair record. And they they have chalked up some some very, very good, good, you know, impressive scores. But they have a propensity at times, as you, you touched on it there, that um in some games, they, 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 they just they just come down a notch or a level or two. Um, you know, when they'd be raging hot favourites, invariably, you know, which is quite commonplace you know, over the last couple of years, um, they don't ever seem to disappoint in those in those situations because they, they, they start to come down to the level of what's in front of them. Um, but they, 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 there seems to be a new maturity about Newcastle West um the goal that they created um in the semi final which clinched it you know was it was a work of art Jack. um it you know here you were 62 minutes into the game tired minds tired bodies all over the place and they crafted a goal of that caliber with pace and precision and um he, you know it, it gives you a sense of, of of what they're all about now they will not for one minute jack be taken uh, the, the, the their challenge likely. Yes, they beat him last year. But I, I, I suspect what will be uppermost in Newcastle West mind minds is that they do not that they do not find themselves in the position that they found themselves in 2017, hanging on, and in, in the last gasp effort, they were they were undone by a Jack English goal. They won't want to put themselves in that position. Now I don't expect that they will. Um, but they are a very, very formidable team. If you go through the lines, Jack, you know, the fact that, that, that um, uh, Dermot Kelly, a player of Dermot Kelly's quality, you know, has to be satisfied with a bench role and coming on and um, cameo role towards the finish. Um, AJ O'Connor, hero of last year, is ha- I don't think he has played in the championship. Actually. No. You know, so like you, you can go down through it. What club in Limerick, Jack? What football club in Limerick over the years has had two All Star nominees? Newcastle West yeah. have in Keen, in Ian Carver and Keen Sheehan, who are both in the top of their game at the moment. You know, and they, they, there is a platform, and I, 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 I've been hugely. Um, Impressed uh, with, with with some of the new players that they have that have come on, and um, and you you were at the semi final, Jack. You know, um, mm. I thought Emmett, Emmett Richter, you know, announced his arrival on the senior stage that particular day. Ruan O'Connor, Todd Donovan, very very Sean Garrity, very very exciting. Brian Nix is still a young player. You know, some there's some very very exciting talent. Coming through, and then of course you have the experience of the two all stars that I said. You have Doc at full back, Dam the Um You had um, James E. Kelly uh, at, at, at centre back. You know, yeah. uh, uh, absolutely an absolute stalwart. And Brian O'Sullivan, who I thought had a very, very, very good game against Monaghan. Yeah, brilliant. Particularly good, good game against Monaghan. You, you, you've that type of quality spread all over the field, Jack, which puts Newcastle West in a very, very strong position. You know, yeah. I, I put it to you this way, if Newcastle West bring their A, day, a game to Kilmallock on sa- Sunday, it will be very, very hard to stop them. Yeah, I, I think that's that's very valid. Um you know that they haven't been able to do it. That's the, that's the only thing. It's the only caveat that they haven't put back to backs together, and that's what they dare to be hoping for. And they're obviously a very good side that that can give it to them if you know if they're below par. But if if the West are at their best, it's it's hard to see any team in Limerick and probably 
Limerick, Waterford, Tip and Clare in that regard, put it up to them, obviously, Kerry and Cork. Club football seems to be a bit ahead of us at the, at the time being. But Newcastle looked like a, you know, a potential force in Munster, not only in Limerick. But they have 3-2 to two over the last five years, um, and they'll be keen to, to double that and go to 4-2. But I'll get your prediction for that match in a while, Matt.